Good evening, everyone. Good night. How are you doing? Greetings and salutations. Welcome to YouTube Live. Tonight, we are streaming live on two YouTube channels. You are streaming live on The Real Andrew Dixon and John Phoenix YouTube channel. Brother John, greetings. How are you, sir? Greetings, greetings, brother. Not bad. Blessings, Thanks. blessings. Well, convocation um, is taking place this weekend at Greensboro, and we are watching the proceedings here from Jamaica. It was a blessing this evening to see the message and, well, the, 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 the entire service that we got to saw. We saw some of the songs and so on. Um, but we want to really just pause for a minute and just really give God thanks for our leader, Pastor Gino Jennings, and also Evangelist Taj. John Phoenix, where you want to start? What, what, what really stand out to you from tonight's service? All right. Um, what really stand out to me is, um, you know, first I want to say, it, it, I give God thanks. Let me just say, I, I give God thanks to our leader, like Pastor Jennings. Right, and, right. I, and I'm confident, you know, and I'm, it, it made me confident to know that I have a God sent man that is leading, mm -hmm. leading me, you know, and give me that confidence that, you know, I, have to, I, I don't have to be worried, you know, if I will be falling, in, if I'm going to fall in the ditch over there, or if, you know, I have the confidence in him, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm sure. That he sent of God, and I'm so confident that you know I have him as a leader, as my leader. Um, you know, as he was talking about the he being around, uh, one, one of the things that he was talking about, I always talk about this. It might sound mm -hmm. selfish when he was saying that we should not be thinking about his death. You know, talking mm -hmm. about what if he should die and and so forth. You know, I always said this to some of my brothers that, you know, it might sound selfish, but I always said, you know, I, 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 I want pastor to be alive. Even when I'm, you know, right up until my old age, I would like to have him around, you know, because, I mean, I, I really don't want to fall in the hand of, a, you know, I, I'm coming out of fast food, so I know what fast food mm -hmm. is like. To some extent, right. and I really don't want to go back into that thing called Fazul, right? So, you know, I just want to be around when I'm old. I want him to be there, see him with leading, you know. So, I, would, I always pray that God give him long life, long life, you know, Indeed. long Indeed. life. And you know, it might sound selfish, you know, so myself, well, you want him to get long life so that you can. You can be around um, in your old age. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I really confident in us that, um, you know. It's, it's for a spiritual reason because when you right. have a leader that, that has seen God, is hearing from God, and God has given him the wisdom to lead the people, who would not want to have someone like that, that you're always connected to God? Exactly. Exactly. Um. As Mr. Taj was teaching about the plumb line, and you know, it, it it really you know struck my heart because as he was encouraging us to to follow the instruction, you know, to follow the instruction, you know, that is what I want. I want. I don't want to really. I don't want to deviate from the instruction that is given to us. Well, by 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 our leader. I really don't want to deviate from that because, you know, I mean, it, 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 look here, it, our leader, there is no doubt about it. Right. It is no, he's sent by God. Yeah. So to follow his instruction is safe. Absolutely. It is safe to follow the leader instruction. You know, so I have no qualms about it. I have no problem to follow the instruction. As means that I was preaching, I, my, my heart was truly encouraged. You know, it was so encouraged and, it, you know, it made me feel so, you know, it gave me that more, it gave me such assurance, you know, to stay 
with the the apostle to follow him you know to follow him yeah man so you know i really enjoy the message i really enjoy the message i really do you know and and my soul is so encouraged i'm telling you brother when i was watching the thing um when pastor before he called up evangelist Taj, and he was just there um talking and he said i'm not gonna preach tonight <laughs> i remember when he made that statement at the last convention and then he started talking and the spirit just carried him and he just he just went i was wondering if that was gonna happen again tonight but i'm telling you i was watching it on my tv screen and literally i was in tears you know tears my, my heart was full because you know when i hear pastor jennings talking about how God appeared to him at such a young age, just early teens. He, he said like 12, 13, 14, there about. And, and God started to show him his work. There are so many things I took away from what he was saying. Number one, the work that God showed him has to come to pass. The only way it doesn't come to pass is if he deviates from the will of God then God would say, all right, I'm going to change my mind, or I can change my mind if God wants to. But if he stays in line with the word of God and please God as he's doing, nothing can happen to him before all of these visions that God showed him come to pass. So in other words, right. Mr. Jennings is certain of his life. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, when... no plan we have to live and all of that, we just have to live by faith. He exactly by faith and knowledge because he knows what god has told him he has seen and heard the visions that god had in store for him he asked god certain questions and pause as he has told us before and here when god voice come back and answer him and tell him you know the certainty of the things that he asked so in dead, no matter how he gets sick no matter who want to try attack him no matter who want to hate him and what they want to wish for him, he cannot die until his work has been accomplished. That God tells him. Right, brother. You know, brother Andrew. When I heard that um, he was sick, right, yeah. and I was so, I I feel so, you know, so sad at one point. And I said, boy, I, I wasn't saying to my wife, you know, really, you know, me like here. I don't like to hear it. I don't like to hear them something, you know, so fast as sick and, you know, and them things. I don't like to hear it. And, you know, it just made me, you know, and I was worried about it. But then I was reminded about the visions that he got from God, that he testified about, the visions that he got. And I was saying that, mm -hmm. well, you know, I don't have to worry, you know, because, now, nah, you know, pastor will get better because he still have the work of God to carry out and, you know, the vision haven't he haven't completed the vision as yet that was right, given to right. him by god so i have no need to worry you know i don't have no need to worry and that and, you know and, and i you know motivate myself and you know build up my confidence and say you know pastor you know he, he will get over that he will get over that soon you know because he still have more work to be to be done yeah and you know Brother Andrew, to how many pastors out there really can speak like that and 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 of a truth just and, and testify that God appear and say this and say that and give give them a vision how to lead the people you know and what to lead them with you know and how many pastors can do that I mean I mean I I I, I see many pastors now when I, and when some pastor when they were asked about how they were called to the ministry I mean you can hear the garbage. You know, coming out of their mouth, and I mean, but when I when I hear Pastor talk about his calling, the instruction that I'm I'm telling you, it really touched something in me. You know, it really touched. I can see really and truly that this man is sent. You know, he's really sent, and you know, and, and if you notice, he just sticks so close to the to the scriptures, close exactly. to the scripture, no matter how exactly. the people might feel you know might feel displeased and he just he just, he just stand firm on it you know this truly is he's a man of god this man is a man of god absolutely a man of god. Let's, let's just pause a little bit and greet some of the people that are on the live 
we have i believe i'm seeing about 11 people on the live we see some messages coming in in the chat gerard mcdonald says greeting brothers greetings gerard how you doing where are you from brother gerard mcdonald let us know what temple you attend and and if you can leave us a comment in the chat let us know how the message tonight from pastor jennings affected you what are your thoughts what what stands out to you in your mind we also have sister Brittany online greetings brothers she says greetings sister Brittany, out of saint mary <clears throat> one of our new ardent listeners to this channel thank you so much for tuning in whenever we have a live blessings how did the message affect you tonight sister Brittany? anything that stands out in your mind that you know you want to testify about or give god thanks for uh, bonita greetings my brothers what a powerful message in greensboro tonight I tell you sister bonita <laughs> an extremely powerful message like like i was saying earlier it had me in tears you know and and pastor jennings was emphasizing that he met god before he met any of us and God was very emphatic in certain things that God told him and warned him to do. Make sure he does not deviate from the scriptures. And John Phoenix, that's one of the things I admire about Pastor Jennings. He's not just strict out of thin air. He will just make up a bunch of things to keep people under bondage. Because he wants to try to be strict. He is strict based on scripture. <clears throat> so if he says, saints, do not do this, do not do that, we're going to stop doing this, we're going to stop doing the other, we're going to start doing this, he's going to come right behind that and say, it is written, scripture says, so and so and so and so, and thank exactly. God for that script, who can go right exactly. to the chapter and verse, and say, give you a chapter and verse, and then read it, you know what I'm saying, as, as Pastor Jennings always does, he's pointing at the scripture. I'm telling you, I grew up in the apostolic church and all my life, I have never seen it like this where a church is emphatic about sticking with the scripture, the scripture, the scripture, the scripture. Every single detail about how the church is run is supposed to be based on scripture. We were not exposed to that. The most I was exposed to, I don't know about you, John Phoenix, you can tell us after this what, what church you're from before truth and all of that. But where I was from in the former apostolic church, they were strict on Acts 2.38, you know. So there are certain things, um, receiving the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues and be, being baptized using the name Jesus. They were strict on that. But even the name Jesus, some some of the ministers would baptize in Jesus' name, and some of the ministers would end up saying Jesus Christ. So if you had like 10 ministers in the church, you would find like a variation between some of the ministers. You know, but they were emphasize, emphasizing the name Jesus. I give them that credit. And they would emphasize the need to be able to, you must speak in tongues to complete that born again experience. But when it comes on to the other elements of the apostles' doctrine, they were not so firm on certifying everything from the scriptures, calling women missionaries. They didn't go to certify that. Who should be an evangelist? Certify who should be a bishop, etc. Um, the, the apostolic churches, for example, in the 1960s, under Bishop S.C. Johnson, it was known that you should have an apostle. Somewhere along the line, that information got lost in transit. And so some of the later bishops, they just know that bishop is the highest office in the church and he's normally, as Pastor was saying tonight, voted in by a board of directors and all of that kind of thing. We had no idea that you still have apostles. In fact, we were told there are no more apostles today. <laughs> you know? So it's, it's a whole nother thing for us here, but John Phoenix, tell us a little bit on, on your background before truth. All right. Um so I was I baptized in um I was baptized in the in the water of the Lake Church. So oh, that was uh, Bishop Evans. Bishop Evans, right. And then and, um, yes. 
So they were they were strict on um uh, they were strict on the on the on the one god, but the the explanation of the one god was <laughs> not correct. Um, by the way, by the way, just for the viewers, um, Bishop Evans at uh, Waterloo that was in Saint Saint Elizabeth, right? Right. Right. And and Bishop Evans is coming from Spanish Town under another bishop that my mother was raised under. So both my mother and Bishop Evans were raised under the same bishop, one called Bishop Walters from All Saints Apostolic in Spanish Town. That's on the corner of Martin and Bigfoot Street, which is actually the same church that Brother Gray that ministers at Spanish Town Temple is, is, is from as well. So just giving a little bit of, of history knowledge there. Sorry, right. go ahead so, back to you. Yeah. So, so yeah, so they were, they were strict on, on, on the oneness, though the explanation was right. was somewhat um you know was incorrect but they still hold that standard that god is one also the, the baptism they, were, they believe in the, in the baptism of, um of jesus christ and as as you said before at your at your church your former church uh some some of the ministers or the deacons would have some um they would differ in in, in the way they administer the, the baptism in, in in terms of the name what name so some would say jesus christ i baptize in the name of jesus and then some would say i baptize in the name of jesus christ and so so that was a whole uh, mix up there uh right. the, 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 the one of the things the, the woman preaching um they used to have women preaching uh, women <laughs> preach there um they believe in that and teach sunday school uh preach in the in the sunday service you know so they believe that and um one of the things that i experienced there was what it uh i remember one time there um the offering was collecting and, and and i heard you i heard pastor preach about this some of these things some persons might believe that pastor is making up some of these things but they are yeah. actually true because um at our Tolu Apostolic Church I can I can testify about I can really testify about that. This is something I witnessed. I right. the offering is being collected and and that was a Sunday night. And when mm -hmm. the offering when the offering finished collected, I remember um Bishop Evan said that uh he don't want any no more hundred dollar in the offering offering fund. <laughs> Five hundred dollars. <laughs> And the bus go, oh. yes man and the bus go around and he said that and he come again and he said all right you know that there's there's more here how's that you know <laughs> and i mean bus grown again and I'm, I'm telling you i was there and i throw, I, be, I believe if my memory serves me right i throw a hundred dollars that was all i have and when the bus keep coming back around i feel so bad in myself i couldn't throw the 500 you know, yeah. and it got run again for the tour, and I couldn't show it. So, you know, the pastor preach about these things, and they are true. They actually, I actually yeah. witnessed that. In, I, remember, in one of featuring a video, I remember featuring a video on my channel similar to that with popular Jamaican uh, TV preacher Gigi Cooper. He had a, a service in under his tent somewhere there in Spanish town, I believe, and he tell the people him say, look. Take back that, take back that, go buy a patty. <laughs> you know, the $5,000 one. What, what I got to look at and say, oh, 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 come here, come here, come here. Take, 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 take back that. Go buy a patty. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Oh, yeah, man. This, so, so this you, is actually true, man. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, I'll tell you to put up. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, I was going to ask you what the change was. What was it like when you made that change from from Waterloo and came right. over to All right. All um, right. It was one blessed and faithful Sunday morning when I was waiting on one of my church sister. Um, she was supposed to, it's a family, supposed they normally would pick me up, you know, right. drop me, you know, I would go with them, you know, so they would drop me to church. So, this particular morning they were late <laughs> so i look you know at that time i used to love to watch all the church service in the morning mm -hmm. okay. but um because of the, the uh, because of my the time when my church would start 
sometimes I didn't get to watch all of the listeners. But this time no one said that, all right, they are been as they are late. I'm going to switch on the TV, watch all of the, ser the service, all of the service. And I, you know, as I sat there, Pastor James pop up. And he was preaching on the woman preaching. And that sermon where he was talking about the woman preaching in the pulpit and so forth. And, you know, I suffered that a woman to teach, not to use of authority from the man. But, you know, and, and it does start right there. And I said, wait, you know, because this was one of the, the thing I was, uh, you know, that was bothering me in Farswood when the women up there preaching and, you know, I woke up on that scripture, you know, and it kind of bothered me. I started to question them about it. Um, I questioned my elders about it and then said, well, there was some argument in the church and so forth. You know, somebody yeah. asked them, if me, if me search for that, can I find it in the scripture? You know, and they say, yeah, but, and I go home and, and, and ask, I, I really, I really, I really search the scripture for it. Come back mm -hmm. again and say, you know, I'm not find it. They say, boy, you have to be careful. You know, my you get, uh, they use the term of fanatic. You have to this, this, this fanatic. And, and something will say, you have to be careful. Just follow, just, just live this, live right. And, you know, and follow Jesus and no worry about them, something, them doctrine business and them thing, them, and you have to be careful. When I get caught up in that, something, anytime one story, or some will pass story and you no know, persons did get caught up on this phone or backslide and so forth. So, right. Right. So I started listening to him before I go to church in the morning. I started to listen to pastor. And then when I started to listen to pastor, my, my understanding started to open up more and more. So, so much so that when I go to church, I'm, you know, and they are preaching. When the woman go up to preach, I'm telling you, I, the only thing left for me is just get up and walk out. You know, but I'm no longer in the message. You know, my heart and mind is far, you know, and it's like, you know, it's just, nonsense they are preaching now when i you know because when i expose the truth but now in that period i have left waterloo and when i when i leave waterloo um when i i mean backslide from waterloo so to speak mm -hmm. and i go out in the world you know, and you know go out there and start doing man of evil but then now I was reintroduced. I, I was in Chilani, yes, Chilani. Mm -hmm. And you know, them times digital data used to enough, you know, cheap <laughs> and enough. And right. so, you know, so, you know, then I remember say, wait, oh, you used to listen to this pastor, Pastor Jennings, yeah, man, when he used to interact. So, I start searching search back on YouTube, I used to go on, I'm, I'm find back in message, and I start listening, you know, right. while I was there out in the world. I start listening back. I mean, I mean, the amount of credit me done. Amount of money me spent, amount of credit me done just to watch Pastor and you and, and, and YouTube in those days. Buy credit, buy credit, buy credit, call, you may become a co-worker, you know, to buy credit and so But anyway, this is now listening to the message more and more and more and more. You know, it, it touched my heart, but it you not know, reach it the right way. So now when I got transferred back to St. Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it was when I was in Olava, right? No, Olava, when I was working in Olava. Um, this particular night, I remember I was listening to, I used to listen to Pastor Bailey at work in the office before I got baptized. But then, no, um, one particular night when I went home, when I went home from work and I was there in the bed, you know, and I remember I, I lie on my back, you know, and I was just here, just. It's like it's like a flash, you know, when them talk about when somebody you know, them say when somebody dying or then get a flashback or you know, you know, it's like a flashback just everything when we do wrong, just just start come right back in my memory, just just start to look on everything when we do wrong there and the heart just start to feel so I mean it pillow wet, tears are so run down my eye. You know, I mean I said, Lord, I mean remember um, that there was a convocation supposed to keep, keep at Spanish Town. Remember that advertised? Right. right, that advertised on YouTube, and I remember that. And I was just there praying and I said, Lord, and I said, That's it. We're done with the world. You know, we have a baptized tomorrow. When, By the um, way, before, no before, you get to the, before you get to the actual baptism, I, I forgot to ask you this question because I remember um, Elder Gary Robinson at the time, he was Minister Gary Robinson. 
um, there was a debate slash discussion that was arranged supposedly between Elder Robinson, which was um, Minister Gary Robinson's father at the time, and um, Bishop Evans. And, and they, I think the discussion did happen, and it, it happened instead of Elder Robinson, who, as I said, was the father of Gary Robinson. The discussion actually took place between Gary Robinson and um, Bishop Evans at the time. Were you going to Waterloo when that discussion took place? You know, I heard no. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I couldn't say no. I couldn't say yes or no because I heard Mister. I re, I hear Ella talk about it, but um, right. I don't remember if I was there at that time. I can't remember if I was there at that time yeah, the, when that the discussion. Theme of the, the theme of the the clash, so to speak, was women preaching, and I was uh, I'm told that the defense that um bishop evans used was he went into first john where he talks about the elect lady and so his argument that if the term elect lady is used in the bible then women must be able to preach <laughs> never right, mind that's that the scripture says never mind that the scripture says <laughs> someone that don't want to teach nor use your authority and, and let your women learn in silence and all of that but he's saying because he saw the term elect lady in the church let them preach Never mind that the term elect lady has a certain meaning that pertains to the church, but he just wants to see the term lady and say, yeah, man, let, let the women go ahead and preach. And of course, he coupled that with the idea, the, the theological school idea that because they were shouting across the room and they were being unruly, that is why Paul told the women to keep silence. And they say that was only for the church in Corinth. Of that course, is what I... I, I have had that discussion with my former bishops when in fact when I was going to coverage he might probably be watching the live now <laughs> Elder Daly at the time he said he was a he was evangelist daily and he said he was a prophet and I remember asking him I said tell me something brother daily Shiloh Apostolic if you're watching I'd love for you to see this and, and answer me leave me a comment in the chat because the same um Corinthians that says, let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as all so say the law. So I pointed out to him that Paul said it, but Paul is not the only one that said it, which is why he said, as all so say the law. So the law said it, and then Paul come back and enforce it. And then the other thing I said to him is, since you're a prophet, let me ask you the question that Paul addresses to the prophets in the same chapter. He says, if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write are the commandments of the Lord. So I said, are you a prophet? <laughs> I don't know if you remember, Brother Daly, if you are watching and you remember, he said to me that he said, Andrew, I'm not going to fight against Paul. With due respect to Brother Paul, what he's saying is true. But the arrows have a button up. What yeah, Paul said when you hear is, the true. <laughs> is true. But the horse flies through the gate already. It can't turn back again. You can imagine that. You see what the scripture says. And the scripture says, if you are a prophet or if you're spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write are the commandments of the Lord. This is the same Corinthians 14, you know, verse 37. And you're going to tell me, say, it's true, but the horse fly through the gate already. In other words, we don't add in them already. We can't take it back. So, a true, you know, but since we add in them already, we can't take it back. <laughs> so, weak, pathetic responses. Yes, man. I mean, it is, it, it, the, you know, it, it, it is like, you know, when the truth, they are in it so long, in this, in their religion so long, that, and, and I mean, when I was in the Waterloo Apostle, we used to have yeah. this thought, hey, this is the thing, man. No other, there's no other way about this, you know, and, we, you know, we praise we held and, you know, and the teaching and so forth, really, and, you know, so making some big talk in 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 in, in apostolic church when the truth now revealed to you, it is like you cannot believe 
really, seriously, all these years, this is what I was boasting about. So now it kind of challenged it to really accept it, you know, to really accept it and do away with your way that you were right. taught in far zone. And because of, and then no pride step in, because remember you make some big talk, you know, you make some big talk mm. and you boast so much more your thick. You know, but you know, I mean, when you, I mean, apostolic boast, you know, you know, apostolic boast, but student thing, you know, and, I mean, that's that's the thing, and yeah, they they even sing about it. I'm a one god apostolic tongue talking. Yes, man. Yes, man. <laughs> right. Like that, you know. <laughs> look, look, I have, yeah. I have um, church brothers, um, um, Waterloo, um, my former church brothers in Waterloo apostolic church, and when they were they are interviewed, they were introduced to. Pastor Tina Jennings, and I'm telling you, they, they, they listen to Pastor Jennings and they believe when mm -hmm. preach, but for some reason, they just cannot make that transition to come over. You know, they some of them, them fear yes, man. a lot of people. They see what you're saying, they understand what you're saying, and they realize they are true, but it comes with a certain repercussion. It comes with a certain emotional pain. Especially when you have been attached to the church for years. You've right. been choir director, musician, or you just a regular choir member, usher, you depend on the youth committee, whatever response, you're, you're faithful, you get several awards for the most attendee at Sunday school, all these different things. And so all of your family is there mother, father, sister, brother, cousin, friend, next door, neighbor, <laughs> you know, down to the dog, you know, you have to visit the church sometimes. And so yeah, for, for you now to pack up and leave that after 10 years, 15 years, after 20 years, it comes with a certain emotional detachment that if, if the word of God is not stronger in you than how your emotions are connected to the people because they are your friends, you're not going to make the step. You will see the truth and pass it because you can't afford to offend nobody, you know. Because I can tell you, when I made the step, it, it, it came with some emotional pain. Because I love the people. They never do me no harm. You know? And, and I was I had several offices in the church. And they were eyeing me for upgrade. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but, but I had a love for God. And I, I picked up that there was something missing. And this is how I actually met Dr. Dennis now and, and Bishop Evans. Because when I was in Shiloh, I went to the leaders that be and asked them. I said, you know, I feel something pulling me to go deeper to God. And I'm wondering if I go to Bible school, if I will get this. You know, because I'm saying to them, all right, I'm already baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm already filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, I'm already active in the church. I already know the Bible to some degree functioning in many different areas, preaching already in the church and stuff like that. But something is missing. And I can't put my finger on it. So I wonder if it's at Bible school. So they say, yeah, well, no problem. Go ahead and go to Bible school. And so I I tried two Bible schools. I tried the one in Kingston that's run by UPC. Um, and, and I think John Mark Bartlett, if I'm not mistaken, was one of the teachers there. And I didn't find it. So I said, let me try the one in Waterloo because I hear the other apostolic saying, yeah, man, the one in Waterloo, man, the fire is down there and the word Dr. Dennis. Yes, man, I tried it. I think I went once or maybe twice. I never went back. You know, it, it was not there. And this time I'm young and I'm like in my 20, I'm like 20, 21 at most, <laughs> you know, but yeah. Let me just give a faithful testimony. When the, I, is the, my father introduced me to the truth of God. And when I saw that telecast the first morning, I was like, this is it. And I take taxi from St. Anne, go to Spanish town, stay over with my auntie, and then take taxi, go cross road, not knowing where me I go. And fortunately, by the grace of God, I saw a brother walking. I think his name is Brother Riley. I'm not going to say Brother Riley. Brother Riley, if you're watching, greetings. I saw him walking to go to Arnold Road. And that's how I found it. You know, and I never looked back since. So, I, I, like you were saying, a lot, of, a lot of the people you left in Waterloo, I can relate to it how they hear, they acknowledge that what is said is true, they can read it for themselves. But 
them can't make the step. So how come you were so bold to make the step? You never look back. What happened? What was it that yeah. moved you? You know, Brother Andrew, it was, you know, when I when I first got baptized and I repented, yeah. I always have this drive to please God. I always want to, when I, at a, as a young child, when I used to watch, you know, when I used to watch the, the crucifixion, <laughs> believe it or not, the crucifixion, that is what, because I come, I came out of a very ungodly home. The crucifixion really introduced me, introduced me to to God. You know, because that's is how I, I know about really learn. I um, know about God like years of God yeah. and you know mm -hmm. Jesus is and then know I start to read the scripture. So I always said to myself, you know, this is who I want to walk, you know, and follow the way of Jesus. You know, you know, with my little understanding. And I got baptized. And I mean, I was always want to please God. So I'm always want to please. So when I when I book uh, when I when I met Pastor Jennings on the television and I hear these things, you know. But when I hear it and, and it was confirmed that this man, the first time I hear him, I said, This man is a man of God. This man of, is a man of God. Uh, I'm coming down to how I made the transition. Um, why, how I just made the transition to just leave. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is, I realized that this is a man of God, sent of God. And he have the word, he have the truth. And right. in my heart, I always, that is what I want. I want to serve God right you know, so it didn't, it, you know, it, it, it does, it, it, you know, matter to me, you know, who is going to feel a way, it's my mind, I always just want to please God, you know, so I, when I, I tell my, when I came out of church, when I went out into the world, mm -hmm. and then I decided to go back, when I, I tell my, I tell my former church brothers, I tell them that, I, you know, I'm going to first church, you know. I, I tell him without any, you know, I don't feel no way. I just tell him that I'm not coming back to Waterloo. Because what drive me to just make that transition just like that is my desire for truth. My desire to serve God right. You know, I always have that desire in my heart to serve God right. That strong desire to serve him right. You know, so that is what really, 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 really my love that love that I have, you know, want to, to, to please God, you know, and since I've been in truth, you know, that is what caused me now to make that transition. And now since I made the transition and I, and I start to learn more and more, now I learned that, my God, the truth is really tough. <laughs> you know, it's really tough. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that which I was seeking <laughs> after, that which was, yeah. that which I was seeking after, it's man, yeah. it's, 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 it's tough. It's, it's really, really tough. To the switching side, you know, you feel the victory and you feel motivated. Right. And then there's yes. the other side, what yes. the persecution and My the God. fight. The reality. <laughs> the reality. Yes. Because, because, I mean, the mind, are, so, you see, you know, you as a child, um, you know, he's like a child. So I was a child then, just hearing it bits and pieces of, you know, you know, about God. So, you know, I'm saying, yeah, I want to follow God. I want to follow God. But then now when I start to, when I come over truth now and start to learn the realness, right. you know, the realness, the reality of God, the true standard of God, then I realize, my God, this really rough. But yet still, I have it. I, I still want to, you know, I am willing to take on this rough part, you know, Absolutely. just the same. And so it's good that you are saying this, you know, bro, because a lot of the people that just see the telecast and so on, and they allow what they see in the congregation to stereotype their mind because they see sometimes 
some of the locations, the sisters on one side, the brothers are on another side. And they don't understand that pastor did this in those temples for disciplinary reasons because he wants the people to focus and also because of certain things that may have happened security wise years ago that you want to avoid going future uh in in the future but it's not a doctrine <laughs> that says if, if if sisters don't sit on the left and brothers sit on the right you're going to hell so people don't, don't understand this and so they form a stereotype in their mind and they think that we suppress women we are male chauvinistic and all of that so, so they're not expecting to hear that the brothers are fighting <laughs> and struggling to right. follow the, the same word you know they think it's only the sisters because the sisters have to cover them head and them skirt off so long but they don't understand that you know and, and also because women can't preach so they think women are not allowed to say anything and they have no voice but here you are as a brother testifying that listen the word beat me too Yep, exactly. You know, Brother Andrew, the, you know, one, one lady asked about my church because she, she, she was, she had the same belief that women cannot do nothing in the church. And she was asking me about that, about my, about the church. And I said, listen, right now there's a sister at our temple. She's the one who played the drum. She said, right. what? Play the drum. She she gonna say yes, man. So so yes, sister, play the drum. She said no. Shout out to sister. I could greet her exactly. I did see her on the camera. She's in South Bar there, um, in the live service tonight. Greeting sister Blackwood, one of the female drummers. Yeah, we have other female drummers. We have up at Kingston, the sister Knight is a female drummer. As well. So yeah, you were saying you're telling them that they have female drummers. Yeah. Yes, yes. So she was, she was surprised. I said, yeah, man, um, sisters, we have sister who, who, who played job at my table. She was surprised. She said, she never get it like that. But I said, yeah, you, you, get that. You, you have to get it from the source. Um, these are things that right. people who really hate the truth of God, they are the ones who are spreading, uh, who are trying to paint a certain image of the church. Like we put the women and all them stuff. So, you know, when I was explaining to her the things that women can do in the church, she, I mean, she was surprised. I said, the only thing, they, they cannot preach. And that is a problem because they cannot mm -hmm. preach now. Because if woman, can, shouldn't, um, woman cannot preach, then they say, all right, woman can't do nothing in church. No. Not, no. not that. So she was, <laughs> she, she, she was a nightmare. So a woman can be a prophetess. Well. In fact, Pastor Jennings has said that many of the things that are unfolding now were prophesied to him by a sister right sister right exactly her to say what is going to happen in the future etc etc no problem and those things are happening today exactly so we don't have a problem with a woman prophesying as we have a passage right. has explained that moreover so yeah there you have it brothers and sisters you hear some testimony coming from brother john phoenix he is a member of the bog temple and a fellow youtuber as well so you can check out his youtube channel and he has a lot of good content over there pastor jennings teaching many topics one of the recent videos i watched that he uh, uploaded was one talking about pastor well it's entitled pastor jennings answering various questions from the congregation you can go ahead and check that out perhaps there might be some questions that you may have that those videos may help to answer john phoenix glad to have you man glad to have you on the live i could take some some of the comments they've been at the chat now let's see what's going on here now um oh so brother brother romy so <laughs> gerald mcdonald is actually brother romy from trinidad greetings man romel sorry greetings brother romel blessings we need to have you on the live next time you know get in touch with me on um on whatsapp so we can we can get your testimony to share on the live and you were telling me about a, a, a very important event of yours you know that should be coming up <laughs> that's there's reason yeah man so brother romel actually gives his testimony he says i thank god for the steadfastness of pj he truly is gonna move he oh he truly is not gonna move from the word of god and that is the true love for god and for his people Yes, sir. Detail, detail. 
totally agree. Um, Bonito, yes, you can go ahead and testify. And if you're asking if you can testify as well, or you're just in agreement saying you can testify the same thing as well. Whatever the case is, you're free to share your, your words with us. Sister Brittany gives her testimony. She says, the message was truly edifying. I can see clearly how the vision is unfolding. And I am just grateful, moreover, for the word and the privilege of being alive to experience God's love. Thank you very much, Sister Brittany. And we share the same sentiments as well. Do I have any other comments? Sister Evelyn, greetings, <laughs> Sister Evelyn. Blessings. How are you doing on tonight? Were you able to watch the live tonight, Sister Evelyn? And, and how was it for you? Give us your feedback. You know, we always welcome your feedback. Thank God for keeping you and giving you strength to continue to keep up with our late live. <laughs> and she's sending a shout out to you as well, Brother John. I was, oh, she was saying I was, oh, oh this is Bonita saying she was agreeing with Brother John. All right, so she will be agreeing with Brother Phoenix. Uh, your testimony there yeah man it was a, it was a solid a solid solid message and it really shows that the man is a real apostle you know god has given him a vision and he's emphatic that he is not going to integrate things that other churches do simply for doing sake and try to integrate that into what the vision that god has given him because if he does that and gets god displeased with him now he is not safe so he rather be safe by displeasing the people and doing everything that god says because rightly so if you do everything that god tell you to do then whatever results god told you that you're going to get they are guaranteed because god cannot fail and this is the problem john phoenix we, we have not seen many preachers out there like this who have received a God-given commandment, a God-given vision. And so they would start off well following the Bible because they know it's the right thing to do. But as Pastor Jennings said, your ear shall hear behind you a voice. If you're not hearing that voice behind you to constantly push you into the same direction that you should go, after a while, you're going to start giving to whichever other voices you hear. What, what, what do you agree with that statement? If they're not hearing from God, it's going to be difficult for them to stay in line with God's word. But when you have a man of God that is hearing from God, it no matter how loud the other people him get and what kind of suggestion you give him, him not going to take no suggestion that will lead him contrary to God. Because after you gone, God will come back, come talk to him and say, what are you doing? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, the, that... that um... The example, it, it, the example is in, I believe, in the book of Samuel with, with Brother Saul, when he disobeyed God. Right. And you see how God dealt with him. And it wasn't, it wasn't, it was not a good thing for Brother Saul at all. So, you know, I understand, Pastor, when he's saying he's not moving from, from the scripture. You know, Absolutely. You, 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 you can see that this, you know, this man, he has a fear for God. You can right. see he, he has a fear. You can see when he's he 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 he, he, do, he do in the walk any any fold. You know you can see that he's walking in a very thin line ke with carefulness, with carefulness. Not like these other pastors just come anything. Them it's like you, you're not. You wonder if they really have the fear of God. You know you have to wonder if they have the fear of God. For a lot of pastors, their experience with God is God is way up in a heaven <laughs> and if they're way down in a earth. So they do the best they can. But for this man of God, you can hear he has a relationship with God where God comes and talks to him man to man, so to speak, face to face, right. ever so often. So he has to be so careful. And we heard him teach us one time that when God talks to him, it's not like when man talks to him. When God talks to him, it passes his ears and fills his entire body. Right. And God just holds him in one position and he can't move until God is done sealing his instruction into him. You don't want to get on the wrong side of a God like this that deals with you like this. Right. 
Exactly. He, he, he have the experience that he, the experience that he have with God. I, I, that is what make him in the person that he is right now. Uh, you know, and, and, and that is what it caused him to, to see a God like that. Because he would have experienced the power of God firsthand. I mean, I mean the power, the real power of God. God appearing unto you. Appearing, just imagine God appearing unto you. You know, and talking to you. Giving you instruction and all these things. I mean, man, you're going to full of his fear. You know. Absolutely. So, yes, you know. Sir. So we're looking forward to what's going to come tomorrow night. Of course, we didn't play the message here tonight, but you can go over to the Truth of God channel and uh, check that out for yourself. You know, it's a potent, potent message that was preached tonight. It's like we got double portion tonight. <laughs> we got pastor yeah. at the beginning, got Brother Taj in the middle, and then pastor came back at the end and just put everything together. This is what you call a full balanced meal. You know, you got your vegetables, or you got your staples, or you got your protein. Everything was all right there. Awesome stuff. Well, 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 that's it for us tonight. I guess we're coming close down to an end. Uh, we don't want to hold people up too late. It's, it's six minutes to 12. We've been on here just reflecting on the goodness of God and the, the message tonight. We just had to talk about it, you know, because... I mean, how many leaders are out there that that can really of a truth testify that God has given them a vision? And it's not that we're trying to big up the leader. We're bigging up God. We're saying that this is a move that God is doing in the earth. We can identify that God is working, you know? And so... <laughs> We just want to hold on. We don't want nothing this track way. You know, it looks like we lost uh, Brother John Phoenix there. I'm not sure if it was a connection problem. Uh, I think we have seen him coming back. So, yeah, you know, this is a move that God is doing in the earth. And we are just happy that he thought so much of us to put us in it. And we want to follow. You know, it, it, it brings on the feeling of the days of the book of acts when you know imagine how new it was for them for for jesus to appear in flesh before them talking to them that was new and then after they thought they had crucified him and gotten rid of him here he is three days later <laughs> and then the thing broke out bigger than when he was alive before the crucifixion and then you're looking for him he can't be found you heard he's gone back to heaven and then the spirit is coming in these people causing them to speak in these diverse languages and you can see the power of god working with them but it was a new thing to the people they weren't accustomed to it it feels like that thing is happening all over again where the way god is moving even though we have read it in the bible and we know that this is what the word of god says but we have become so accustomed to the churches around us not sticking a hundred percent with the word they kind of borrow some things and then they tweak some things and some things not so important you know for example you're so accustomed to um sorry gospel artists men having their long hair and yet you know as pastor james preaches the the scripture clearly says does not even nature teach that if a man have long hair, it's a shame unto him. You're accustomed now to seeing women going to church bareheaded, you know. And the Bible says the woman that pray or prophesy must have her head covered. So, and these are just two examples. There's so many other things that we have grown up. If if you were raised in church and raised reading your Bible, you know, thoroughly, at least <laughs> semi thoroughly, you would have seen a lot of things that you see even in the New Testament that are no longer being followed today in most churches even the, the basic receiving the holy ghost and speaking in tongues and the whole born again process that has been replaced now by just praying a sinner's prayer so there are a lot of things that have changed but here is a man that says let's go back to the old time thing 
just for somebody to come to tell us to go back to the old time thing that alone is strange for the masses even though they carry the bible under their arm they just don't really believe that all these things that are in it are really important so for find a man now that's telling you you have to obey everything that is detailed in the word rightly divided it's strange you know for a lot of people but it is the right thing it is the right thing you know um while you were talking i think your, your connection or something yeah but um you're, you're making a point just now go ahead uh, i didn't hear that i say i think you were making a point just now you can uh, go oh ahead. yeah you know you know another thing that um that stood out to me in the message um when pastor was testifying about his work is when he said that he was um or he, he told brother that about the work that he was going to do you know uh and you know what stood out is that this he actually got he actually got the vision is so clear that he was told what he should do and what is going to um what is going what is going to be achieved um mm -hmm. you know how he's going to get uh he's going to have fleet of buses you're going to have um churches all over the world and this did you don't have to laugh when he said that he only have 15 people when he was telling brother that that he's going to have churches all over fleet of buses people be coming in by the numbers you know uh by you can see the, i mean that that's yeah. that is that is how much i can see that you know he, 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 he took some faith there you know he was, he was about 22 he said yeah uh -huh. He said he was about only 22 years old when he was yeah 22, yeah right right yeah. right so that also you know i really was when i was listening to that i was like you know whoa man you know yeah i'm really encouraged you know really encouraged you know i i just want to just stick with the the teaching and, and just follow in the in the steps in the footstep you know sit at his feet and just eat up know what he has to, to to you know to give to us you know i just want to do that i just i, I want to grow whole in it and die in it yes, you know sir. die in holiness not only dying not only die well and when i said dying holiness not die knowing that i'm a part of holiness and i die you know die in it like i mean yeah, yeah. die in god you know, I want right. to die right. Die, die in holy. God. Die <laughs> holy. Keep it holy. Keep it holy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know, that is my desire. That is my desire. Though I, you know, that is my desire. And I pray that God keep me in this way of holiness. And those, those, until those, are, some of the powerful, those are some of the powerful scriptures that we have over here that some of the other churches may not have because you know the 66 book compilation is what rome gave to them and removed some of the others but by the inspiration of god pastor jennings went back for it for an early print of the bible i believe that was from as early as 1611 thereabout so all these other books including the wisdom of solomon so this quotation that i made a while ago is from the wisdom of solomon they that keep holiness holily shall be judged holy <laughs> so it's, it's, it's one thing to say holiness unto the lord you know you can know what holiness is unto the lord but are you doing what you know to be holy so they that right. don't just know about holiness but that keep holiness holily shall be judged holy yep thank god for man of god sister evelyn says the pipeline is straight follow god's instruction thank god for sending me a real apostle genogenics yes sister evelyn totally agree we have another comment here from joy dixon wait mother joy what you doing up <laughs> Sister joy says thank god for a real man of god i am really blessed to be a part of the chosen few greetings everyone god bless you all yes ma'am god bless you too 
Make sure you get your rest, you know. <laughs> All right. Who else we have here commenting? Uh, Bonita says, greetings, Sister Joy Dixon. All right. Uh, Brother Paul, blessings, man. Brother Paul didn't know you were on. Come on, come on in, man, and, and have a few <laughs> remarks. I'm pretty sure you were watching this thing from over there. If you even a snippet, you might have seen. So I'm going to send you, I'm gonna send you the link. Come on in and give us a few lines of your testimony before we run off here. We're going to be going off real shortly. Oh, John Phoenix, again, I want to thank you very much for, you know, coming on on sharing on on the live i believe you're streaming live on your platform as well right uh, and, and i, I, I do. All the viewers that have been watching on john phoenix channel all right continue to stay in touch with the message and those of you who may just be watching the messages and you're kind of watching from the sidelines and you haven't visited yet come on in and visit you know make a visit to the temple and sit down and hear the word for yourself and you know see if you can Make a step yourself. Yes, I do appreciate and I do appreciate you having me here as well. I do appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. I sent I sent Brother Paul the link. Let's see if he's gonna come on in <laughs> and and let's hear his testimony. All the way in the place where for the night start when we have day and all these things. Alaska. Sister Joy is responding here. What does she say? Yes, my brother, keep it holy. Sure, he will keep you. Yes, keep us in prayer. Paul Spence come and commenting here. <laughs> yes, my bro. All right. Here he is, Brother Paul. Greetings, man. How are you doing? Greetings, sir. Greetings. <laughs> Blessings, man. How you doing, man? You're over there laughing already. I'm here. I'm here. It sounds like you have joy. <laughs> sounds like you have joy, unspeakable joy. I'm telling you. <laughs> what was what was it like? I mean, what... I'm in my dorm room. Yeah. I'm in my dorm room, just witnessing to the message. <laughs> the Might evangelist had handled the word properly, man. Yes, properly. he did. And the people I'm over there that way just have to yourself, so it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> people may be wondering that, yeah, yeah. It's wonderful, it's wonderful how Pastor Pastor came up talking about um sticking to the word and and always going to stick to the word and people coming trying to change him, and then the spirit just lead um the evangelist in the same direction to strengthen and reinforce what the apostle was just prepping at didn't go into detail much to because he wasn't preaching he was just prepping at it and then the holy spirit just lead the evangelist the same way to set the foundation straight and make it known <laughs> yeah it was very encouraging man very encouraging and the pricking is there and the chastisement for those that are still seeking around the outside of the building <laughs> yes, yes. Sir. <laughs> it's not just waiting <laughs> it's not just waiting it's what they're doing right yeah that, that, yeah. that yeah that is it you know you're saying that you say you're you're waiting but yeah and you say you're, you're moving you're making progress yes and at El, El it's more than just saying that the same that that yeah it's more than more than just saying that you're waiting for the gift of the Holy Ghost. You must be doing something. Right. And doing something doesn't just mean that you're you're saying that you want to do something. You must be active in the work of God. So it shows show it shows to God that you're willing to to make yourself available. Yeah. Right. Ella Gear Robinson has been doing a, a great deal of, of talking about this. You know, persons who yes. say they are tarrying for the Holy Ghost. What are you doing when you say you're tarrying? When you say you're waiting until, <laughs> you know, are yeah. you waiting while obeying? You know, are you fasting? Yeah. Are you praying? Are you doing all the things that God said you should do? Because if you're not, yes. you're really just wasting time. You're not tarrying. That was some good yeah. stuff. And, and that plumb line, the way how uh, Evangelist Taj tied it nicely together. He elaborated the on construction. the building. 
the construction oh site. Oh god! <laughs> you know, when he started off with Arch to take it up. Yeah. When he started off with Arch take, I was in the, I was, I was late in the bed watching the, watching the message. I'm like, yes, sir, yes, yes, sir. And he give it to a, to a, to a general contractor. That contractor mm-hmm. is killing every single area. So that contractor can oversee every single area of the construction of the building, masonry, plumbing, electricity, this, mm-hmm. that, carpet, carpentry. So you anything go the line. Yeah, man. Go ahead, sir. So, so any, anything go to line that contractor can say, eh, 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 no, this is how it go. Because what? He has right. seen, he has the plumb line. He has yeah, the blueprint. He has the blueprint. Right. Yeah. And you notice how and he, he outlined that the blueprint work to special contractors who specialize yes. in the different areas. Yes. And that was a great analogy. The different ministers. Yes, you notice how he outlines that the blueprint isn't just given out to any anybody, you know. It's one specific person it's given out to. Right. That person has to teach the others. Nobody else will just come up and be like, oh, I don't, don't want to hear from you. I just got directly to the architect. <laughs> Most persons see the hierarchy that he's creating, but you have to understand how it's structured. The specialist not come and say, no, I'm tired of being a specialist. I'm going to oversee everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Specialist know him please. Yeah. And he, he talked about those that, that, that specialize in electricity. Stay right mm-hmm. there. So now go somewhere else and go to plumbing and then go flood out the place. If you yeah, go plumbing, <laughs> go, right go, go for electricity. Go electrocute yourself, and then know the general man is going to come in and come start out all of that now because you need to go kill yeah. yourself. You go flood out the place, you drown now. You have to take something and go revive you. Yeah. Yeah. In detail. Absolutely. Yeah, man, you made some very, very, very good example. Yes, sir. Yeah, brother, you can count on brother Taj for that. He always makes some, some vivid illustrations that you, you grasp the yes. idea in a, in, a, in a plain way. Absolutely. Yes, sir. All right. It was a blessing. And, 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 and anyway, he talked about the, the church and how the plumb line, because everything that you're building has to be erected based on the plumb line. And the plumb line is set in the midst of the whole thing. Just like God says, yeah. the plumb line is set in the midst of the people. <laughs> and it's just that in the mm-hmm. midst, in the midst of the people, yeah. you know. And the building and people will fight us because we, we run the scripture. People will yeah. fight us because we run the scripture. People will, will, will hate the apostle because he runs the scripture. He always gives the analogy that he's just curdled up in scripture, you know, like a bird in a nest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he gives that analogy one time. But it's a, it's a, what's that? It's a Acts 2 38. He's just curdled up in the scriptures. He's not moving. <laughs> Yeah, right tonight there. he was another term yes. tonight. He say, "I eat, sleep, breathe scripture." Yeah, yes, <laughs> that's his home, brother. Yes, you know, you, you come to him. With yeah, anything. yeah. So use the term that the scripture is his home. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm just grateful, man. Never in my life have I experienced something like this. You know, I've I've experienced pastors that do their best evangelists that do their best and they study the word to show themselves approved and you know they may do a bit of fasting and stuff like that i've, I've met ministers that have done even five days fasting um not because god told them to but out of the, their zeal and they lived to talk about it and did it again just just wanting to get closer to god <laughs> but when you have a man that god appears to my God, talk to him and say, yes, "Do this, right. do that." Yes, sir. You know what I mean? And and what was interesting too, we we learned tonight that Pastor did not always get it right in the sense that his zeal, <laughs> he explained that God yep. had to slow him down. You know, because when he was yep. young and just starting out, he was just firing and just going, going, and God come after he preached yep. and whatever. God come behind him and said, "Slow down." Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come back yeah. here. Because be. when he told me that, you know, you see, you see, being in truth and persons that that hearing this, being in truth, you have many questions that you will ask about even past and about the church. You see, if you just take time and listen and wait 
All of this will be answered soon, quickly, without you even asking the question. The question will just be in your mind, and then bam, the answer comes there. I was always wondering why why we started out as apostolic and then apostles' faith, but then yet no way here, pastor said, I right, started out with a zeal, and then God has to slow him down and said, no, 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 take it that, yes, yeah. take it that. I hear yeah, from because... from former former um. I hear from members, all the members in Kingston, where pastor is younger days, pastor just a spit scripture quick, <laughs> quick, and messages, messages. It was like a bullet. Yeah, it takes time. You know, slow down, man. Take him time, and people get to hear no one. Him take him time in this, and you hear little deer and hear little that. Yeah, the group. Man. Yep. I remember hearing one of the old messages from Pastor when he was, I presume, about in his 20s or maybe early 30s. And at the time, the yeah. apostolics had it that there were seven dispensations. So I don't, I don't, I, once upon a time, I used to know them in order to, you know, <laughs> they, they used to teach us them in, in Sunday school. <laughs> so I think you start off with innocence because. Adam and Eve, uh-huh. they did not know sin, so they say that's the dispensation of innocence. And then um, after they had sinned, they say the new dispensation started, which is conscience. And then after that, I think in the days of Nimrod, they say that was the dispensation of human government. I don't remember yeah, all of yeah, them, yeah. they come around to <laughs> Noah's time or something else. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, so there are seven of them that yeah. they are listed out. And I remember pastor in his early yeah. days would make quotation to some of that. And then God came in behind of him, <laughs> you know, and he had to come right back mm-hmm. to the church and say, that seven dispensation thing is not in the word. You know, in, in the New Testament, mm-hmm. you see the dispensation of grace. That's it. I mm-hmm. believe it's also referred to as a dispensation of the kingdom of God. But yep, the whole seven dispensation of thing. It's not scriptural. It's, it's and that's rare in a manner. That's rare. That's rare. That's rare in a manner. It, it, you have to, it's the only thing that you will find that will separate them from any anyone else that you listen to. Many other preachers will just come out and just say something out of, out of feeling and them read and then just get excited. And they no say it wrong. But what? They just gonna make it progress, progress on the side. Two years gone by, they must forget that. And then they just try to correct it. Then now come back and say, you know what? What I thought it was foolishness. No, the correct thing is this. And come and correct the wrong right in front of the people. No, somebody must leave it there and make it go. And I said, no, man, right. no, I forget that. Man. Five years time, I forget that. After five years time, we'll <laughs> teach them the correct thing. If everybody come and argue, just, just tell them, say, yeah. I never tell them that. <laughs> That's right. real. You find a pastor Yeah. Right. Brother John, that's that's the difference with Pastor Jennings and some of these other pastors out there where you know they hear of things like women preaching, divorce and remarriage, you know, the whole denominations, the Baptist, Methodist, Apostolic, etc. Different things that, you know, by the permission of God, Pastor Jennings will point out. And the hardest thing for these pastors to do is to change, even when the, the truth is staring them in their face. Some of them, because they're a part of a bigger organization, and so the presiding bishop has to pass, agree with them making this change first. And if they go to the presiding bishop and the presiding bishop says no, even though it is in the scripture and whatever, they just have to ignore it and pretend like it's not there. But Pastor Jennings is willing, because I remember Pastor Jennings said, I don't know if you heard this message, John Phoenix, where Pastor Jennings said a Muslim asked him a question one day when he was when he had apostolic faith. Yes, I heard it. The <laughs> he said it was a Muslim. He wasn't even a Christian. Yeah. He said yeah. it was a Muslim that asked him, <laughs> say, that apostolic thing that you have on the church, where is yeah. that in the Bible? <laughs> I probably didn't say he had the full look. <laughs> he had the full look. And he went to talk to God about it. And he said he uh, he remember God told him, I think he, I don't want to quote him incorrectly if it was an early morning, but he said he heard God's voice. And God thunders his voice and said to him, Tell the people what I am. 
You know, and he said, God told him at such and such a chapter, what am I? Holy. You know, and so he came back to the church and said, we're going to do away with all of this apostolic thing. God is holy. And, and, and when I started looking at it, it's really true. You have the holy prophets. Yeah. That's written. You have the holy apostles. That's written. You have the holy angels. That's written. And Isaiah said, you shall call them the holy people. That's all written. <laughs> you know? So right. I'm, I'm telling you. Prophets are holy. The kingdom yes, of God to come back. Even though he's an apostle and challenging the yeah. world. He was able to come back and say, we're going to change this. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it like the apostles had it. Yep. It's, it's awesome. But as you know, so one sister there in the midst, I could take her, I could put her upon the live. Sister Janice, greetings. <laughs> greetings, sister. Greetings. Jay Jan, you have to unmute your mic, you know. <laughs> greetings, everybody. Greetings. Greetings. How are you doing? Sister. <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing sister janice how is how is greensboro treating you ah i am blessed and as usual it is a blessing to be in a, in the congregation gathered hearing the messenger of the lord speak with such power by the permission of god and you know you just feel so empowered knowing that the man is steadfast, you know. I really do admire that, and it's just so very, very overwhelming. As usual, convocation for me is always, you know, emotional. The love in the air, the Holy Spirit, everything is just so right. So I'm really, really enjoying my first night, first night, yeah. and I can tell you it's a blessing. Feels good, man. Feels good. Yes. <laughs> so, so sitting there and, and, and hearing Pastor Jennings talk about his vision, what, what impact did the vision have on him? The vision, I always say, you know, imagine God had me in the vision and I'm here in the congregation. You know, Pastor always say he saw some of us before we actually came to the truth. And that would have meant that I, I was in the vision that he was given. And that, for me, is something that I don't take lightly. And uh, as I always say also, you have to prepare yourself for the vision. So whenever I hear about the vision, I also think about how am I going to better myself to enhance the work of God or to, to be a help to the work of God. Because if the church is moving on, the vision is coming, is unfolding. Where am I? You know, I want to, you know, my manifestation to be in it as well. So absolutely. I count my blessings being here. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh boy, it's, it's a blessing. Well, I have not been to the US as yet, but I'm I'm hoping <laughs> soon to to soon and very soon, there. man. Soon and very yep. soon. So I, I, I can just imagine the joy of just being there and just seeing everyone and, you know, enjoy. Because even some of the music, we can hear the fullness of the music even on the live stream. Because sometimes on the live, oh, um, they turn up some of the mics um, louder than some of the instruments or something. I hear right. one mic louder than the rest and all of that. But I can imagine how it sounds beautiful when you're sitting there. Mm -hmm. How what? Even in the choir rehearsal we had tonight, mm -hmm. just a little mini um, convocation there. You wow. know, everything done to the glory of God. And when it, the music starts and the spirit take over, boy, I don't know how to describe it. It is a very good experience that all of us, I would wish, I would want to experience. You know? Wonderful. So you're, you're supposed to be there back tomorrow yes tomorrow we have rehearsal okay yeah for saturday right. we are, we're doing two songs one saturday night and the other sunday morning if I'm not mistaken. okay uh since as you're one of the choir directors i'm gonna ask you to do a little follow-up with sister ayana for me 
because um, I have her down to represent Jamaica. So I have a little chat with her. She's supposed to be meeting up with brother Josue and the band there to run through her song. So you can just check on that and keep it yes, posted. Yes, most definitely. All right. Well, it was a blessing having you on. It came on in the last minute. It's supposed to tired now. It's, it's 12.23 <laughs> here. Are you guys like one hour ahead? What? Yeah, yes, yes we're one hour. It's now 1.23. One, one and not to mention the hunger for food. <laughs> After oh, yeah? service. I don't, I don't even want to want tell her how much hours ahead she is from me. Let me not say anything, you know? Who is that? Yeah, the Eskimo? Have... <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> don't worry yourself. The truth, the truth of God will come over this. It, it, yes, it will come over this time. Part is coming at great. But the Eskimo oh, is all right, buddy. Okay. Because once we cross 12 o'clock, we are on to um, the next day. So for us, it's Friday morning. Yes. I'm All still I'm Thursday. still on Thursday, yeah. I don't move it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have three <laughs> more hours in, in Thursday. Thank you. Yeah, you're four <laughs> hours ahead of me, sister. Yes, thank you. Right, Enjoy yeah. Friday for me and tell me how it goes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> well, YouTubers, thank you very much for joining this live. Uh whichever platform you're watching this on, those on Facebook, some are on my Facebook page are watching it at the moment as well wherever whatever platform you are on thank you for tuning in thank you for watching stay tuned for more content more reaction i'm going to be um pulling out sister Jenny's song that we did in that long interview I'm going to be pulling out her song so you can just listen to that look out for that coming up tomorrow on our youtube channel one of these weeks we're going to have paul gracing us with a song as well <coughs> Right, brother Paul. I said it's some cold medicine here. Yeah? I said it's some cold medicine here. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, man. So yeah, you can look out for that um, coming up very soon. Yes. All right, John Phoenix. Anything you wanna say yes. to the viewers before we close out? Well, um, well, I, I, as I, I really appreciate being here, and I truly thank God, you know, that. I was able to, to tune into the message um ever since night. Um my to my viewers, I I I do encourage you to really stay tuned and not only to just watch the message but apply. Right, meditate on it. You know, meditate on it and you will see some result. All right, that's my Absolutely. Wonderful. All right. And uh, wait, uh, I just, let me just take one last comment from the chat. The church I used to attend, Bonita is testifying, Sister Bonita, the church I used to attend taught on the seven dispensation, and I was also confused. Right. Yes, Sister Bonita, we can go on and on with many of these things that we used to be taught. But thanks be to God, we have a real man of God that's leading us right back. To the scriptures as he always say come back to bible all right so that's it we're gonna leave you for this evening remember to go on over and uh, check out the message if you have not yet seen it go on over there to the truth of god youtube page and uh, the message that was live august 3rd go ahead and check that out you will not regret it i promise you you will not regret it go on and check it out all right, God willing, we'll be back with you with more content, more live streams, and the list goes on. Peace and blessings unto all. All right. Peace. Peace. Peace be.